stories at 7. WHO and PAHO provide update on the Omicron variant of COVID-19. Tourism Minister outlines plans for a substantial boost in regional airlift. Officials hope for improvement in the country's ease of doing business ranking from port redevelopment project. And Antigua and Barbuda government congratulates Barbados on transition to becoming a republic. Those stories begin right now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Hello, good evening. You're in tune with the ABS Evening News. A warm welcome on this Monday. My name is Garfield Burford. Thanks so much for joining us. And I'm Sequoia Servia. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, local officials are at this hour continuing to closely monitor the new variant of COVID-19, Omicron. That's right. Director of the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, says the variant's mutations suggest its behavior at the clinical and epidemiological level differ from other COVID-19 variants. Dr. Etienne explains research is ongoing to ascertain the variant's transmissibility, severity, and the symptoms associated with infections of the variant. The Pan American Sanitary Bureau is urging regional governments to accelerate their vaccination efforts. Well, the PAHO director also reminds the populace that vaccination in combination with adhering to COVID-19 safety policies is the region's best defense against further spread. She encourages regional governments to continue reporting new cases and case clusters. In order to enhance the region's surveillance of COVID-19, she also advises genome sequences and testing samples be shared with the Genomic Surveillance Network of the Americas. She made the comments while writing to Antigua and Barbuda's ambassador to the Organization of American States, Sir Ronald Sanders. Well, of course, follow this story and keep you across it as it unfolds. Meanwhile, World Health Organization uh, Director General Dr. Tendris Adhanom Ghebreyesus warns that the emergence of the heavily mutated Omicron variant of COVID-19 is a reminder the pandemic is not over. We're living through a cycle of panic and neglect. Hard-won gains could vanish in an instant. Our most immediate task, therefore, is to end this pandemic. Well, like most scientists, Dr. Tendra says it's not yet known if Omicron is associated with more severe disease, more risk of infections, or more risk of evading vaccines. Scientists at WHO and around the world are working urgently to answer these questions. Now, as Antigua and Barbuda sees an increase in international arrivals to the destination, the Ministry of Tourism says there will also be a substantial boost in a regional airlift. Guadeloupe-based airline Air Antilles will increase its service offerings to the country in December. The airline will make its inaugural flight to the Twin Island Nation on the 17th of December and will introduce new travel routes, including twice-weekly flights from Barbados and St. Lucia. Air Antilles will also offer direct non-stop flight service twice weekly to Antigua and Barbuda from St. Martin. Tourism Minister, the Honorable Charles Fernandez, says the country is re-establishing itself as a heartbeat of the Caribbean. Officials are hoping for an improvement in the country's ranking on the ease of doing business report from the mega redevelopment project at Deepwater Harbor. Port manager Darwin Telemac pointed to that objective as he provided ABS with an update on the project being bankrolled by a 90 million US dollar loan from China. Shana Keisha Francis recaps his comments on Antigua Barbuda today. Port manager Darwin Telemac says work continues apace on the redevelopment of the cargo port at Deepwater Harbor. He says the project is set to be completed in the first half of 2022. Yeah, we're on the last part of it. The the birth one area is being redeveloped, or totally reconstructed actually. Um, it's being um, dug out and totally redone. Uh, that is the main berth that we use. That remains the final mar marine piece of work that ought to be done there. Meanwhile, he explains a further step will be made to improve efficiency in port and customs arrangements. The port manager and the customs controller will be in the same building right across the street, same space. 
Well, today, the Comptroller is uptown, the Port Manager is at Dredge Bay. So we're still pulling the pieces together. In a very short time, we will have the most efficient uh, port logistics environment uh, in the region. Telemac also says the new arrangements where customers importing goods conduct all transactions in the new warehouse have been going smoothly. But overall, what we've seen is an environment that has really that has really worked very well. The customers are very, very pleased. I mean, when you've had to go up and down, across, walk to Dredge Bay or drive to Dredge Bay and come back in the sun to come back, it's been really tasking on our people. The port manager says the aim is to bring the best possible service to the customer. Shanakisha Francis, ABS News. Thanks, Shanakisha. Meanwhile, the port manager departed the island this afternoon en route to Miami, Florida for high-level discussions with shipping lines. The Antigua Port Authority is seeking to cement business with these lines to fill the void left by Crowley and others. The latest on this developing story this evening from Sherilyn Beezer. We are committed to ensuring that those lines do more with us, that lines who would have been thinking about coming to the Caribbean can now have a reason to come to the Caribbean. The port manager highlights some of the lines the authority is seeking to attract. The, generally, uh, we have uh, CMA CGM who visits us every week. We have Tropical Shipping and King Ocean along with Seaboard Marine. We'll be meeting with those. But in addition to those, we're going to take some time and reach out to some of the other lines that are not coming here. These include MSC Mediterranean Shipping and other global lines that come into Port Everglades, such as Seacore Island Lines, which operates mostly in the Northern Caribbean. He explains what would be pitched to the lines. Because of, uh, first of all, our commitment that we are establishing to them, the infrastructure that we would have developed, and the human resource uh, personnel that can deliver for them. The port manager says the authority will be proactive in ensuring that there is recurring business from the lines and will therefore have a very vibrant marketing team going forward. Cheryl Inbees reporting for ABS News. Several police officers are receiving training to respond effectively to domestic violence incidents. The week-long training began Monday morning at the Sir Wright F. George Police Academy, as Jamie J. Roche reports. Instructor Taken and Singh addresses officers at the start of a week-long domestic violence training course at Sir Wright F. George Police Academy. He says the participants will receive U.S. federal-level training designed specifically for law enforcement officers. To teach them how to respond from the time of the initial call to court, which includes their safety, interviewing, and danger assessment level. Acting Police Commissioner Everton Jeffers says during the pandemic, the statistics show an approximately 8% increase in domestic violence cases in the U.S. and other parts of the world. I don't think the Caribbean is any different, not even by a mm, because what happens around the world happens in the Caribbean. He says law enforcers must be suitably trained to address the issue. Meanwhile, Acting Commissioner Jeffers says the police should help rectify any deficiencies in the local domestic violence laws. If the laws are not in place, where is the cheat for us to fight? And so it is very important that from this course, some of you can come up with some ideas and we can take something to the minister and make sure that something is set in place so that we can be more effective in what we do. The course will conclude Friday. Jamie J. Roche, ABS News. Let's stay with that story because the acting police commissioner also says effective training will help prevent domestic violence incidents from escalating into more serious crimes. When we get to the scene, it is our responsibility to do an assessment of what we see when we get to the scene. Too many times, some of the murders that occurred afterwards could have been avoided. He also says it's vital the police have adequate statistics to determine if a suspect has been the subject of a previous report. You have someone who might have been with some, uh, well, a woman who moved from one woman to the next, and so you have a report before, and then a report later. How do you tie this person to these two women? How do you tie this one person to these two persons here? 
simply by having information in your diary, in our databases. Antigua Computer Technology contributed a teleconferencing system to the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus today. Jessica Russell has our report. A corporate partner has donated a teleconferencing system to the UE5 Islands campus. Antigua Computer Technology handed over a teleconferencing equipment system to the University of the West Indies Five Islands campus on Monday. ACT's Managing Director, Solomon Dumith, says it's important for businesses to give to educational institutions. I dedicated myself really to ensure that education can be brought to the hands of our people. Because without that, there's no future. The campus principal says the equipment, which will aid in virtual meetings, will make education more accessible. They have given us an important gift so that we can now improve access to tertiary education for all our students and for citizens of this region. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Now, a story in the region which has implications and is being watched very closely. In fact, it's resonating across the region and the world. Barbados is said to become the world's newest republic, with ceremonial activities said to begin tonight. Minister for Tourism and Investment Honorable Charles Fernandez and Senator Shanella Gavaya are representing the government of Antigua and Barbuda at the event in Bridgetown. In the meantime, Foreign Affairs Minister Honorable E.P. Chet Green has congratulated Barbados on this major achievement. Our story on this from Rakiba Parisio. Foreign Affairs Minister the Honorable E.P. Chet Green congratulates Barbados on deciding to move away from the Queen as head of state and becoming the world's newest republic. And so this is the most fulcrum moment for Barbados. Um, that moment when the, the loyalty of the Majesty of the Queen is no longer the issue. It is about um, you know, Barbados being fully sovereign. So I also want to commend Barbados on, on making the move at the stage. Heir to the British throne, Charles, Prince of Wales, is on hand to participate in the ceremonial activities. Governor General of Barbados, Dame Sandra Mason, will become the Republic's first president and replace the Queen as head of state. Minister Green believes this is a logical step for countries across the region looking to shed their colonial past and chart their own destinies. We're going to see more and more Caribbean countries going that direction. Um, the whole question of sovereignty, um, dropping the, 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 the monarchy as head of state, it is something that has been talked about in the Caribbean since the independence movement. The latest move by Barbados is stirring discourse in constitutional monarchies across the region. But what of Antigua and Barbuda's future on this issue? The Foreign Affairs Minister says he is in favor of the country becoming a republic. However, he adds it is a long journey. You know, what they are doing there, what he will do here eventually, I'm, I'm, I pray that I'm alive when it happens, will be taking our sovereignty one step further. And with that level of sovereignty, it calls for a level of responsibility on the part of the, of the citizenry. And so it, it is not a, a, a single simple um, arrangement. Rakib Aparicio reporting for ABS News. And there's more on this story later on in the newscast and in fact later on on ABS television as well because join ABS television starting at 10.45 tonight for live coverage of those ceremonial activities which Rakib referred to including the installation of Dame Sandra Mason as Barbados' first president. So in a, few, in a matter of a few minutes she will move from representing Barbados' head of state to becoming Barbados' head of state. So a major development there in Bridgetown. We'll follow this closely for you again. Live coverage starting at 10.45 tonight on ABS television of those ceremonial activities, the historic situation in Barbados where it moves from a constitutional monarchy to a republic. We'll also, of course, have much more from this in our regional segment of the news a bit later on. We'll be crossing live to Bridgetown. We'll be speaking with Lisa Broom a bit later on in our newscast from CBC. She'll be talking with us about the scene there, the mood of the country as they get ready to go towards a republic. In the meantime, when we come back from this break, more of the national stories we're following closely, including this one. Public official accused of rape. And later, more legal jeopardy for a man on remand at Her Majesty's prison will explain. Upcoming on the ABS Evening News, on air and online. Stay with us, please. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home 
and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Magico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Vincent, I'm coming on there tomorrow. I hope you get the AC started out now. Yeah, what the place did I sell AC? You mean LL Supplies? Yes, Jack. They move. Oh, great Scott. Well, they're gone now. Don't worry, they're not too far. They just rise up the road before Kennedy. LL Supply Limited, your number one supplier for air conditioning and refrigeration parts, has now moved to a fresh and convenient location in order to serve you better. Visit us on Utility Drive, Casada Garden, or call 562-6562. LL Supply Limited, we stock quality parts. Showtime shopping parts, we got all the things you want. So many ways to shop, you can pick up curbside. Showtime shopping parts, all the appliances, electronics, and furniture you like. Showtime. Showtime. This Christmas, we all want comfort and to reconnect, and Harris is right there to help. So create that special Christmas feel this holiday with 10% off select Harris paints and accessories. Shop now and get all the Christmas feels this year with Harris paints. Promotion ends December 31st. Love it, Tex-Mex. Tex-Mex. Termites. Go back up! Hang on! I am hanging on! Don't mess up your deck with Tex-Mex. It's Terminex. Hi. The only way to nix it is to Terminex it. Enjoy double data and double minutes when you activate a 7 or XL 30 day always on plan. Plus, get a ZDE A3 for only $99 when you activate any 30 day always on plan. Visit discoverflow.co for more details. Conditions apply. Christmas are the sparkle, you know? Make it happen with flow. The best experience in life is feeling valued, appreciated, and heard. To know you have a team you can depend on when you need them the most. You too can depend on us at Automotive Art. You are more than just a customer, you are family. We hope when you're shopping this Christmas, Automotive Art is a top of mind. We're always thinking of you and your car. Join our family on Facebook and Instagram at Automotive Art Antigua or WhatsApp at 720-7211 for all of your Christmas deals and discounts. Automotive Art, the place to start. A warm welcome back. Now the complainant in a rape case brought against a public official has now completed her testimony following cross-examination by the defense today. The witness has also answered additional questions from the prosecution and the judge. The complainant is the first of five witnesses the Crown is expected to call before closing its case. The trial began Friday morning and is being conducted under the recently enacted Criminal Proceedings Trial by Judge Alone Act. This means the court has not empaneled jurors in the matter, and presiding judge, Justice Colin Williams, will determine whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty. As per the act, defendants charged with the sexual offenses must give consent before the case can be tried without a jury. The judge has restricted the media from revealing the details of the witnesses' testimonies before the case ends. The trial is being held in camera in accordance with the Sexual Offenses Act and the defendant who is facing a single count of rape cannot be named unless he is convicted.
a stay in the court because police have laid additional charges against Tristan Armstrong, who is on remand at Her Majesty's prison. The Tyrrell's man is facing fresh aggravated robbery and illegal firearm charges concerning a July 14 robbery in Willikis. Police allege Armstrong robbed a taxi driver of his vehicle and an undisclosed amount of money in EC and U.S. currencies. Investigators say they recovered the vehicle abandoned at Potworks Dam. The police previously charged Armstrong in connection with an October 27 alleged robbery at Bailey's supermarket in Falmouth. His committal hearing in that matter is scheduled for the 23rd of February next year. But Armstrong is expected to appear before the court tomorrow concerning the new charges. Let's remind you that coming up at 10.45 on ABS television, live coverage of the historic, momentous developments in Barbados. The country moves from being a constitutional monarchy to a republic at midnight. And their first president is the present Governor General, Dame Sandra Mason. She moves from being the representative of Barbados's head of state to becoming Barbados's head of state. Upcoming, of course, 1045 live coverage from Bridgetown. In the meantime, when we come back from this break, we'll take you to overseas developments, including more on the aforementioned situation in Barbados. We'll be crossing live there to speak with Lisa Boom for a scene setter, a mood setter, as the country prepares to transition to a republic. And in international news, South, Africa, South African president is involving... concerned about unjustified travel restrictions. Those stories upcoming for us on the ABS Evening News on air and online. Please do stay with us.